one, though. This is a response to, I'll call you Lisa in California, so not everybody knows who you are. Now, you said that you've been doing a lot of reading about country living and homesteading. Now, that's good. And you've seen that many city folk fail. And the reason that they fail and move back to the city is they run out of money, unrealistic in their expectations and come unprepared, domestic problems like one spouse wants to be there and the other doesn't. Okay, now, um, those first two reasons... They run out of money. Well, living in the country, you do need money. Now, if you plan to try and live off the land, where you move to the country, you get animals, you build your own cabin, and you're just surviving in the woods, if you have your own animals, you have to feed them. You can only feed them so much compost. But if you want them to grow up and eat or be fat, well, like, for instance, turkeys. Turkeys will die if you look at them cross-eyed. They don't really, but that's why they put um, penicillin in turkey feed from starter right up. So if you, you know, you get, um, that's why people are getting so resistant to drugs and penicillin and stuff. Because the turkey and the chicken have been fed it all their lives, or at least the turkey have been fed it all their lives. The chicken is, is more hardy, so they're fed it a little bit. Now that's in the feed. You have to feed your animals. So if you're not going to buy the feed, then you have to grow the feed. In order to grow the feed, you have to buy the seed. You usually have to fertilize it, either in some way. Most people buy commercial feed fertilizers, which costs a lot of money. Or you can compost and turn over the soil. Now, to try and get enough food for those animals, if you're what you grow, if you're not going to use any money, it's very difficult, you know, to have the seed and replant your own seed. You're not going to get very big crops and very... Anyway, it's very time-consuming and labor-intensive with a low output. So then you become a full-fledged farmer. Um, so usually people move to the country and they immediately get animals. But if you don't have money... Then, um, like if you don't have a job, you're trying to live off of savings, I mean, that'll all run out eventually. You have to have some kind of income. So usually people that live in the woods have some kind of cottage industry. Either they work in the town, they have a regular job doing whatever regular jobs are available, or they home home industry. Um, you know, maybe they're a potter, maybe they're a, a handicraft, you know, woodworker, or... Um, a tree uh, cutter downer, you know, um, whatever that's called, tree removal or whatever. Usually you have to have some kind of income. Very few people really do, especially now, this is Canada. Now in Canada, it's snow will cover everything all winter. So if you are deciding to be a vegetarian, well, there's nothing grows in the winter. So it's, it's really not back to nature to be a vegetarian if you live in Canada. So you really have to survive on the the animals that are out there, you know, whether you're going to hunt deer, or rabbit, or wild turkey, whatever it is that you can hunt. You can do that. Now, if you go along the road, sometimes there are deer that are killed, and somebody around here, as soon as a deer is hit, several people immediately stop, probably while the person that hit the deer is there. And, you know, first one there gets the deer kind of thing. Everybody wants those deer. So even if if a deer appears on the road, say I went to town and I come back, I know it's only been there half an hour or whatever, or even an hour. So that's a fresh deer. That's fresh meat. So it's going to get picked up. So that's possible. If you're into that, you could have, you know, that kind of deer that are, you know, but it's rare to find them. Okay, now... <coughs> Um, so running out of money, so you need some source of survival money because you do. It does cost to live out here, even if you've, um, unless you've, if you've bought the land and you've paid for it in cash, it is pretty cheap out here. You can have a, you know, beautiful big property for a hundred thousand dollars, and or you can have a small piece for fifteen thousand dollars and just build your own cabin. 
but it depends on how far away you are from the city. The further away from, say, Ottawa you are, then the cheaper the price of, of land will be. Now, Toronto is a huge city, and a lot of people will commute a long way. So you'd probably have to get several hours away before the prices go down, but then you're getting closer to other cities. Um, so, um, I mean, Crown land, that's the government land. Out here, I think people um, have hunt, hunt camps on Crown land, so they build little cabins there and they only stay there during hunting season. Now, you have to be warm. If you live in the country, if you're up here, I mean, if you're going to be down in the south, you don't have to worry about this, I suppose, but you've got to go pretty far south before you never get cold. So you have to heat. If you're not going to be on the grid, and if you're going to try and be living with the land and homesteading, well, that's wood. So you have to be able to cut down trees and um, take care of your wood, you know, stack it, bring it inside when you're using it, and light your wood stove. And now you're going to have to have clean your chimney, otherwise you'll burn your house down. And um, you can hire the locals to clean your chimney, or you can figure it out. But you're still going to need supplies. You're going to need a, one of those brushes with the big, uh, I don't know, it's a chimney sweep kind of brush. And you need a wood stove, a good wood stove. You know, you can't just build a fire on the floor in your living room. You could do that if you're living in a teepee, but you're going to be darn cold. And you use up a lot of wood. Okay, so people do fail if they need the city and they don't have a job. But now, when you, if you want to survive, let me just check the time on this. Six minutes. Okay. Um, they come unprepared. Um, there are towns. No matter how far out you get, there are towns. Well, I suppose there's a limit to that. But, and most people have jobs or cottage industries, and so they support themselves. And with the internet. You can live out here, but of course then you have to have internet service. You have to have a phone line, or you have to have that satellite thing, which costs a few thousand dollars to have set up. Um, but if you have the internet, then you can sell what you make online. But you're not going to make a lot. You know, there's, there's only so much soap you can make to sell. Now, if you've got a job, like if you're a writer, and you can sort of telecommute from the wilderness, well, that's your best bet. If you can, because then, what you can't do by yourself, you can pay somebody else to do. So I would suggest that if you're going to move out in the woods, you'd be able to telecommute, at least until, you know, you could do less and less of it as you, um, as you get more used to what you're doing out there. Now, the other people that live nearby will be able to help you. They'll know everything that you don't know. So you can just make friends with the neighbors. In fact, when you're in a buyer place, you might want to find out, meet the neighbors, go around and drop in and visit everybody and see what kind of neighbors you are and what kind of things that they do. Because you will need your neighbors. Neighbors need each other when you're out in the country. You're always, um, you know, your car goes over the side of something deep and you call the neighbor who has a tractor or something. And there are many reasons you need your neighbors. And they need you. Okay, so that's addressing the ultimate failure in moving back to the city. You see, um, yeah, as long as you've got a town nearby, like we live, um, you know, half an hour or so from a town. And so I can buy everything I want in that town. The things that I cannot buy, I can go to the big city and buy, you know, big cities an hour or two away. You know, bigger cities are further away, or whatever you need. But um, if you want something special that they're not going to make, that they don't sell locally in the grocery store, in the hardware store, but you know, you've got these big box stores, and they're everywhere now. So you do have them. You have the local small stores, too. Okay, that's all for this. Bye.